Hey there, Alex here. The year is 2007. Apple just announced their first iPhone. At that point in time, few people saw the smartphone revolution that was coming. BlackBerry or Research in Motion didn't, and neither did Microsoft. But someone at Google did. A small startup by the name of Android Inc. was bought over by Google in the July of 2005. They were working on a mobile operating system to compete with the likes of Symbian, BlackBerry OS, and Windows Mobile. As you can imagine, early prototypes looked a whole lot like those devices too. That all changed after the announcement of the iPhone, and that was when the dream began. It took a while to rework the project, but it finally came into fruition in the September of 2008. It was first released by T-Mobile in the US with the name G1 the first commercially available Android smartphone. Internally, it was codenamed Dream, and that name was used for the phone in certain international markets. The T-Mobile G1, or HTC Dream, was at the intersection of a smartphone revolution, and it really shows in the design of the phone. You have a full touch screen panel like the iPhone, but without any of those multi-touch magic. Then at the bottom, you get a row of BlackBerry-like buttons, down to the trackball for navigation. That trackball is really sort of a necessity considering the touch interface wasn't that great. Hidden underneath the screen is a full physical QWERTY keyboard. At that point in time, of course, a physical keyboard was still the norm. While this form factor may seem a bit antiquated these days, I imagine this was pretty cool looking back in the days. I mean, it's still pretty cool looking now, don't you think? Hardware-wise, it's probably pointless to talk about the specs too much, so I'll just list it out here. The more interesting feature is probably the 3.15 megapixel camera with a two-stage shutter button and autofocus. While that may seem better on paper, in reality, even the older iPhone GT takes nicer photos, which really shows how important image processing is. Just so you know how far we've come, here are some comparisons to the Google Pixel 2 as well. Looking around the phone, you'll also notice a lack of a 3.5mm audio jack. So it's like we have gone full circle now with the Pixel 2 dropping the headphone jack too. If you're old enough to remember, the 3.5mm audio jack wasn't always a commodity on mobile phones. Just a few years prior to that, we still had phones that used either proprietary connectors, 2.5mm audio jacks, or phones that just used a charging port for audio output. Of course, back then, most people didn't really consume much media content on their mobile devices. Anyway, now let's take a look at the software itself. I actually managed to downgrade the phone to version 1.0 so you can really see where it all began. It's a pretty bare bone experience obviously with a basic set of apps. You also get the Android Marketplace to download apps, which doesn't really work anymore. The interface is actually still pretty familiar looking with widgets, home screen, and the app drawer. The app drawer has gone through quite a few changes over the years, but it's amusing to see that we have gone back to the swipe up gesture and a vertical scrolling list. There isn't really much else to talk about, but this is where it all began. When you look at the HTC Dream, it's kind of amazing how far we've come since then. Back then, it was just a phone that does a little bit more than your regular feature phone. These days, they can do so much more. It's a device for multimedia consumption, it's our gaming device, it's where we read our news and books, it's where we connect with our loved ones, it's where we store and record our memories, and so much more. It's also quite fun to look back at a phone from a time where people weren't as attached to their phones. I hope you've enjoyed this throwback look at the HTC Dream. I certainly enjoyed making it. 2017 was a pretty great year for Android smartphones, and hopefully 2018 would be awesome too. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed my content, do give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and check out my Instagram too while you're at it. Thanks, and see you guys on the next one.